the Russian army has been given a peacekeeping mission, so-called, in East Ukraine. What to expect now? During the last 48 hours, many videos have appeared showing these troops. Now, if we stop this and look, you'll see that all the vehicles have a large Z applied in white paint. That's a recognition symbol for soldiers who may soon enter combat against an enemy equipped with similar vehicles. How far will they go? The Russian army has moved a big proportion of its combat power, 70% according to some estimates, to the area around Ukraine, about 125 battalion tactical groups, up to 1,000 soldiers in each of those, plus supporting elements, taking them to around 175,000 soldiers. They're commanded by half a dozen higher headquarters in Crimea, bordering the separatist-held Donbass there, and just north, where a key concentration from the first tank army is centred, including those tanks we saw at the start, to Belarus. Russia now has many military options. It could send troops into breakaway Donetsk and Luhansk, as tonight's announcements suggest, or go further to batter the Ukrainian army. It could push beyond, and current dispositions suggest a double envelopment. Those two arms you see there from Crimea and the Belgorod area might be used to cut, cut off mu much of eastern Ukraine. At the highest end of escalation would be the type of plan revealed by the UK Ministry of Defence last Friday, suggesting a drive to Kiev and indeed taking the whole of eastern Ukraine. Now, experts in Kiev doubt this. They feel that Russia's forces may be big, but there just aren't enough to occupy such a huge area or surround their capital, a city of five million. As for the trigger for this military action, President Putin hosted a public meeting of his Security Council today. There, he sounded the death knell for the Minsk Accords, the long-stalled peace process between Ukraine and the Russian separatists. And he delivered this a few hours later in a TV address. Пытаются вновь организовать на Донбассе Блицкрик, как это уже было в 2014 и 2015 годах. Чем закончились тогда эти авантюры, мы помним. Well, what about the trigger for military intervention? There have been incidents in the Russian separatist areas that seem to be the very provocations that Western leaders warned about, from the alleged shelling of a border post in Russia. Ukraine says none of its artillery was within range to this apparently graphic footage which claimed to show a man who'd lost his leg in Ukrainian shelling but who some observers have pointed out appears to already have a fixing for a prosthesis. Extraordinary goings on then as Russia tries to shape public opinion for action. So how will President Putin's speech be regarded by its audience in Russia? Earlier I spoke to Andrei Kortunov Director General of the Russian International Affairs Council. Over a fragile internet connection, our apologies for that, I asked him whether tonight's speech was effectively a declaration of war.